name is Lauren King. Welcome to my channel. In my last video, I brought you along as I massively cleaned out my closet. So it's only natural that today I'm bringing you with me as I list all of the clothes online to sell. I'll walk you through how I prepare the orders, how I take the photos, and how I ship them out. As we're all stuck at home right now, or I'm assuming we are, it's a great time to go through your things and get rid of what you don't need, and I hope this video helps you out if you're just getting started on selling things online or if you just wanted to see how someone else does it. So maybe this goes without saying, but the first thing I do is quality check. Basically cleaning everything and making sure that everything is in the best possible condition. If it's new with tags, this means that I'll lint roll it. Just because I do have a cat and hair gets everywhere. Shoes I clean, I use these Crep Wipes or a Jason Mark scrubber set. And I might run an extra wash in the laundry for items that are pre-loved or vintage just if necessary. This is because things sell best when they're in their best condition, but even more than that, I always want to send things to people in the same standard that I would expect to receive something that I paid for. So I try to remove any signs of my wear and just make it as new looking as possible. So it's a lot of work to actually photograph every single piece. And since most of it is brand new with tags or I've worn it maybe once or twice for a photo, a lot of these items are still online at the original place where I bought it. This is a bag from Revolve.com and I'm going to take all of their high quality, highly styled photos and steal those as well. And the good thing about doing that is that you can also get the really exact product description. You don't have to make it up and measure it and figure it out on your own. I know a lot of people are selling vintage items, in which case this isn't really an option, but if you can, if it's a semi-new product, always try to check because it can really, really save you a lot of time and just make your page look a lot more professional. Okay, so now that I've found the item, I'm just going to screenshot every angle. Oops. And then I'll scroll down. See, like to take a photo like this, where it's so high quality, like it's obviously done in a studio, this would take me ages and it's just honestly, it's not really worth it. So, now I have all the product details, the customer gets way more information than I would be able to provide alone and it saves me a ton of time. So now that I've got the product photo, I'm going to get a lifestyle image from my page since I did wear this one time just to shoot it. So I'm going to take my photos, cute, so that they can see how the item can be worn, screenshot those and then I'll just do one flat lay, that way they can see the professional photos, they can see the lifestyle, photo, lifestyle photos, and then they can also see an up close so that they can make sure that there's no flaws or breaks or anything like that. For the flat lay, I've got a nice clean background, good lighting, and I want to make sure I'm shooting in square ratio because on Poshmark and most other marketplace apps, they require square photos only. So if you shoot regularly, you'll just have to crop it later. Even though I try to skip the process of shooting on me if possible, there are bound to be items that are no longer online. If I can't find it online, or if I don't have any photos in it yet, or just if I think it needs to be modeled again, I will take some photos on self-timer. I still shoot these in square mode since that's the aspect ratio that Poshmark requires. I usually shoot at least three angles, the front, the back, and a detailed shot. If there are any flaws, then I get a shot of that too. Now on to listing everything. I have these jeans right here. They have been worn once for a photo. They're in perfect condition. This is what I'm going to list right now and I will walk you through how I do it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna open the Poshmark app and then I'm going to go to sell. And I'm going to go, the first thing they ask you to do is to upload photos. So you can see that I've got some lifestyle photos. I've got the flat lay, I've got the actual shots. So now they're gonna ask you to crop it. They keep everything in square, which is why when we shot these photos, we shot them in square. So I'm just gonna crop it where I think it shows a good amount. Like I don't think we really need her in it. It's more about the jeans. There we go. 
Now once you crop the photos, it's going to ask you to choose your cover photo. Usually I like to choose um, like a main photo like this because it really shows it off. I don't know that I would choose a photo like this. I think that I would definitely do like this one or this one. I think I'm gonna go with, that's tough. I think I'm gonna go with this one. And then if it doesn't do well, I will just switch it up later. I also have the website pulled up right here. That way I can refer back if I have any questions. So I'm gonna say it's a high rise button fly mom jean by Pistola Denim. So I'm gonna list the condition always. So perfect condition worn once, what the brand is and where I purchased it from. So this is Pistola Denim purchased from Lulu's, I think. I would say any flaws or quirks. So these are trendy, um, meant to look like they're folded over at the belt. And then I'm gonna go to their website and I'm gonna copy, paste, their details that way people know the rise and the inseam and the measurements and all the details like that so paste you want the description to be as detailed as possible because a lot of times people will buyers will um, open a case against you so for example if they open a case against you and they say, you know, there was a mark that you didn't mention or there's a rip that you didn't notice or, you know, just something is wrong and they feel like they want their money back. They have to open a case in order to have Poshmark grant them the return or exchange or refund. And so you want to put as much detail as possible. That way it protects you. And I try to always give as much detail as I would want. Um, that's like kind of my rule of thumb. So we go select category and it is jeans, pants, oh, jeans, uh, mom jeans, so I'm just going to say none, and then I'm going to say one, I'm going to say size 27, and then brands, pistola, color, blue, new with tags, no, original price, and this is why it's good to keep the website too. So the original price price is 108, but you can see that it's currently on sale for 69.99. So however I price it, I want to price it lower than what their sale price is. That way someone still, you know, wants to buy from me as opposed to buying it brand new. So 108 was the sale price and then I'm just going to say 45 listing price. I'll make 36 when it sells, but honestly, I also do accept offers people can make offers on items and I am always willing to accept an offer and go lower they see the actual product they see it modeled and they see the sort of you know regular e-commerce photos they've got all the information and an invitation to ask more questions if they want but yeah this is how I list things and hopefully that helps <laughs> Now that I've got a good amount to take to the post office tomorrow, I think I've got about six or seven sales, um, I'm going to start packaging things. So I use the shipping labels that Poshmark provides. There are other ways to print shipping labels that are slightly cheaper because Poshmark does use more expensive shipping. Like they basically assume the weight is heavier than it is. You could go through different steps in order to get cheaper shipping labels, but the convenience of just having it sent to my email and printing it out is worth whatever the extra amount may be. And then for boxes, I try to reuse PR boxes as much as possible just because I don't like to waste. Let's ship out this hot pink bikini. I'm going to use this Laura Mercier box that they sent me and they included some tissue paper already and I will also write a little note just to say you know thank you so much for shopping my closet I hope that you enjoy it I'm sure it's gonna look amazing on you I don't know I feel like it's just kind of a nice touch to ensure that they will shop from you again hi Darcy thank you so much for your purchase hope you 
Bye. 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 There are times when I just kind of don't have the perfect size box for something. So in that case, I use a priority mailbox. These are free from the post office. You don't even have to stand in line. You just go in, you take them, and you leave. Like, it's actually okay. It's not stealing. I really go ham with the tape. I'm like super paranoid about boxes coming apart, which to my knowledge has never happened, but I just, I'm like that. These are all the boxes that I'm taking to the post office today. So I'm just gonna load them into this huge, I'm just gonna load them into this huge bag. Now off we go. Thank you.